Recipe and Water Quality District Interim Board to order. And we are being recorded. So don't see anything untoward. Um, and uh, with that, uh, Emily, will you call the roll, please? Sure. Thank you. Um, Ann Gravitt? Here. Bob Sollinger? Uh, Lori Stegman? Here. Corky Collier? Here. Dave Ritma? Here. Eric Mueller? Here. Shirley Craddock? Present. Eric Molander? James Allison? Here. John Niyama? John L. Bell? Mary Helen Kincaid? Uh, Paul Lumley? I'm here. Hello, everybody. I have to leave at about four o'clock, though. Sorry. Uh, Steve Fancher? Here. I'll also need to leave at four o'clock today. I'm sorry. Um, Tanny Stephenson? Here. Uh, Mike Jordan? Here. Is there anyone I missed? Oh, Tony DeFalco? No. <laughs> I'm not sure if you got Mary Helen. She's on here. Just Mary Helen's on. And I see Eric's coming in from the waiting room right now. I said here. Hi. And Bob Salinger's on. Hey, Bob. All right. So John Yama, John L. Bell, and Tony DeFalco are all mm -hmm. short. Okay. All right. Um, first thing is the budget. Is that not correct? Correct. So we'll go ahead and um, I would ask Tani just to go ahead and formally call that uh, budget committee back into session from your long recess. <laughs> um, excuse me. I think that the board chair needs to recess the board meeting mm -hmm. so the budget committee meeting can be called to order. We're in recess. <laughs> Okay, good afternoon. I would like to call to order this meeting of the Urban Flood Safety Water Quality District Budget Meeting for April 19th, 2021. And do we need another roll call, Emily? Mm, I'd rather, um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, I'll just do one if we make a vote. I can go ahead and do a roll call and I can establish. Okay. Okay, with that, the um, first order of business is the budget for the fiscal year 2021-22. And I know there were some additional materials that were sent out to you uh, this last week. Are there questions on any of that? Tanny? Yes. Hi, this is Eric Molander. Can you hear me? I'm, yes, I I'm can, calling. sir. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I just wanted to get a sense from Casey or other people on the staff as to whether or not they felt that $150,000 was gonna be enough for the revenue analysis and development or whether we should go ahead and increase that budget uh, due to the scope that we're talking about. Um, I'm gonna to have to kick that one to Colin. Colin, can you respond to that? Yes, hi, thanks for the question. Um, the, the budgeted amount um, and also combined with uh, expected revenue from the Business Oregon grant and completing um, the rest of the grant requirements for that um, would be adequate uh, to complete the budget. Or complete okay, the, so uh, that, that's, you know, I'm, I really, so you feel that we'll be able to get the kind of consultant that we need to do everything that are in those bulleted points, plus uh, the elements where we're in support of the other two committees for $150,000. Um, I'd like to just try and clarify one thing about that. This is expected, at least as I 
was told when I was putting these numbers together. This is expected to be a two year effort uh, with 150,000 in the coming year. And the current idea is that it will be another 100,000 in the following year. So the total for this project program will be $250,000. That's correct. In and uh, Colin, why do we think that that's going to be an adequate amount of money? The $250,000, um, looking at what uh, work has been done or needs to be provided by the drainage districts, things um, including some of the asset management work, some of the assets and liabilities work, um, and our capital planning efforts will actually be used to provide a lot of the background information. Uh, the committees will be required and it will require uh, funding from um, some of the other line items. Uh, the committees will be uh, helping provide the mission vision values that the additional requirements uh, will be based on. And then uh, one thing that did change or uh, just should be noted the difference is there's a separate um, communications public outreach line item and a lot of the work to um, both build the identity of the new district as well as um, actually do some of the outreach that's necessary will be funded through that. Um, so there will be some uh, requirements of this uh, revenue analysis contractor to coordinate with uh, that consultant. So we're, we're spreading it uh, slightly to, or expanding it slightly to other budget items, but um, we do think the 250,000 is adequate for the actual uh, revenue analysis work. And this includes making a recommendation as to the size of the district, is that correct? Uh, the size of the district is uh, stipulated in the statute. Um, so that is- um, oh, no, all... it, there's, no, we get to stipulate the size of the district. No, I, uh, I what, think, I, go ahead, Colin. No, no, please go ahead, Mike. Well, I think, I think what you're referring to, Eric, is the size of the managed floodplain. Thank is you. Is what we have to define. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so there's uh, two things that the district uh, will, will define um, within the district, which is the definition of the managed floodplain and uh, you are able to establish tiers. Uh, so if there you know, is, are contributing areas, upland areas that might contribute water, um, that can be part of the definition. So yes, the, uh, the other thing that is worth noting is that um, you know, I think it's laid out and it's rational to actually get a recommendation, uh, a recommended revenue development or a finance plan by June of 2023. But that doesn't mean that all of the work going through uh, some of the, the public process, uh, going to different councils and commissions will be completed by then. There might need to be additional work. There is a up to two year option in that contract. Um, if there is additional um, versions or sort of uh, needing to go back through it that's needed after June of 2023. Got it. And will this consultant also be advising us on how we would um, uh, provide a, a legal defense of our rate, uh, utility rate model, uh, in the event that we are challenged on that in court? No, that is out of scope. Okay. Um, so that's something that we really should budget for because uh, at some point, uh, simply because of the dollars involved, people will want, will end up taking us to court over whether or not this is really a utility rate. And as a result, I think it's going to be very important that we, um, before the fact, before all this transpires, um, to understand what our risks and liabilities are and to develop a game plan for defending the utility rate. And you're requesting to have this included now, right? Uh, well, yeah, because um, 
if we go to legal counsel and they say, you know, there's uh, a very high probability that we're going to be challenged on this in court, and there's even a 30% chance that we would lose, uh, we need to factor that into our thinking. Uh, because this, you know, the, the contract as it's written um, really just tells us that there will be one option that is going to be explored for this, and it's the utility rate model. And I'd like to hear from legal counsel that, um, that they concur that it will pass muster um, and be a legitimate utility rate, and that, you know, if if and when we are uh, challenged on that in court, that we will win. Uh, Eric, I just want to make one correction, uh, and this is irrespective of uh, your request of having legal analysis, um, but for the RFP and for the revenue development work, it is explicitly to explore all of the tools that are provided within the legislation or within the statute. Um, so it is not written um, to create utility rate. Uh, it's not to say, I mean, that will definitely need to be tested. I just want to um, make sure that everyone's aware that it is to look at all of the statutory tools. Thanks. Okay, so uh, all of them are, are available. And uh, this is going to be an extensive modeling exercise. Right, and, and you feel confident that we'll be able to get somebody that can do this for only a quarter of a million dollars. Do you feel confident? Um, and it was based on, uh, and you know, this is a, a second go at it, and we did get some really useful feedback um, from some of the consultants that do this type of work, as well as uh, the two consultants that did um, uh, provide a bid the first time around. I guess question for staff, are you real comfortable with where you're at now or would you like to uh, take a little shot at reviewing it, checking the scope? I, this is Shirley, I have a question. Uh, go ahead, Shirley. So um, so Eric's position is, is that we add more money to the budget, is that correct? To make sure we have adequate funding available for these this dynamic. Um, the question I have then is, um, Colin mentioned this is a two-year process. So when, uh, I guess what I would want to know is, when would we need to be ready in case there's a um, legal challenge? I, I would think that would, would be more likely to occur in the second year of this discussion than it would be in this year. So I was wondering if that is a, an expense that we would want to consider for the next year and not this fiscal year. I. I don't want to speak for him. I would guess where Eric's coming from is to make sure that we have this legal position really solidified uh, in the initial stage so that it doesn't become an issue down the road. Am I correct in that, Eric? Uh, absolutely. And if it turns out that that legal counsel says it's unlikely that we would prevail or there's even a 30% chance that we would not prevail, then uh, we would have to take that into consideration early on and place a greater emphasis on the other uh, revenue mechanisms. Okay. So, so does Danny, that make sense to you? I'm sorry. Danny, Cut out there uh, for a second. Okay. That's okay. Just a couple things. One, uh, BES is in the process of doing an overall analysis of all of our rates. And I can tell you that a quarter million dollars is in the ballpark for that kind of work. And then secondly, I have a high amount of confidence that if you ask the attorney whether a utility will work and be legally defensible before you've actually developed the entire utility, the attorney's going to tell you it depends. So, so while I completely agree with Eric regarding the issue of being confident that a utility methodology that you develop is defensible in court, if you haven't developed the methodology before you ask the attorney, he's going to say it depends. He or she will say it depends. 
And it the, depends on what is what it we depends really on the structure know. of the methodology. Exactly. And and having counsel tell us here are the elements that you need to have in it uh, is is really quite important. Well, uh, if, no, oh, uh, one advice on, the, if, on if I may. generally. Go ahead, Hong. Huh? Oh, uh, part of the legal validity of, of anything like this involves uh, both a procedural question and a, uh, a substantive question. As to the procedural question, I think it's, it, it, would, um, it is consistent with what staff has proposed in terms of reaching out to the public making this um, process as apparent as possible so that through the procedural uh, uh, process, we develop factors that's going to advise our substantive basis. That's going to undermine any efforts by the public to question the eventual substantive factors that we take into consideration. Uh, this is definitely a very unique district. Um, part of the evaluation, and I, I hope the consultant would do this, is to consider what other similar, uh, what other, other districts outside of Oregon has, has done to develop a service, uh, a service fee or a utility uh, using flood control type of risks reduction. But that certainly does fall on the, uh, you know, on the reasonableness and uh, whether what we really, what the court will be looking at is, is it reasonable or not? And, and I think uh, Mike is right that it is something that's really hard to say until those things fall into, into place. But if we're more um, educated by what, what our public outreach, what our uh, due, due process, tells us, I think we have a better chance of defending it based on the fact that uh, it, it has been pulled from the public. But having said that, I, I very much appreciate your desire to consider and make sure that this is legally defensible because it's a huge step. And maybe it's not, the, it's not going to be the first year where we're gonna see potential legal, uh, legal um, challenges and maybe as we get closer. And we will get a better sense as we get closer to the launching of that, um, whether there, there are going to be issues. Okay, thanks. It sounds almost like we can discuss this issue for a while. And, well, um, Tandy, maybe the thing for us to do is to say that we, we know that this is, this is going to have to be done um, and at a minimum that we budget funds uh, for the Revenue Development Committee um, over and above the financial modeling that would say, how do we defend this? And if, if the group says, you know, that doesn't have to be this year, it could be next year, uh, I'm fine with that. Okay, um, that would most likely come in the form of a budget amendment for next year yeah or part of the budget or during the fiscal year, year from where yeah. it is today yeah okay um did you have any other questions or comments can i uh this is surely so i assume we'd want to make sure there's adequate funding in the contingency to if we're going to if we might need to do an amendment this year right so I guess what I'm wondering is, do we need a little bit more time with this uh, before we vote on it? Um, that's a question. up to the committee. I'm sorry, Mary Helen, go ahead. No, I, Alex, I, I, my question, and I'll try to make it quick, but, and it can, it, if it can be answered or discussed at another time, um, and I apologize, I missed the April 5th meeting. But the line item for communications and community engagement, I'm the big cheerleader for community engagement and making people know, but um, an increase of $120,000, I, 
will we have any knowledge of what those line items are? And um, to be totally transparent to the people that don't know this, um, I'm leading a project called the Vanport Place Marking Project, and we're putting signs on the PIR site. And MCD, uh, uh, Pen2 and MCDD have both contributed to that project. And I don't know where that money budget came out of or who decided to give it to us. And it puts, uh, I've been transparent the whole time about being connected to Pen2, the Urban Flood Safety Water Quality District and running a project that got money from two of the drainage districts. So I don't know how we, will we, and maybe Casey, you can explain to me later or whatever, mm -hmm. but um, who decides who gets the money? I mean, there's a lot of really good organizations and the support to community is good, but I, I guess being a fundraiser for a project, um, I've never been able to just write a letter and somebody send me two checks. So is there going to be some oversight on this community um, engagement fund or how it's used or who gets the money? Because I don't know if anybody else on the committee even knows who gets money or is connected to them. And I wanted to bring that out now because in reading the budget documents, an increase of $120,000, how that will affect ratepayers, the bot, all of that. And Evan, I see you. So jump in and tell me to be quiet and you can tell me later. Thank you, Meryl Helen. Evan, did you have a comment? Well, uh, yes, thank you. Um, I, I think it is yet to be determined precisely how the funds will be used for the community engagement, but it will be 100% tied to the work of the Urban Flood Safety Water Quality District, not to projects like Vanport Place Marking. Um, you know, maybe in the future, which is the discussion this board needs to have, there will be funds available for community projects that support the education and, you know, the mission that's within the statute. But for the time being, I certainly think we need to prioritize our resources on talking to people about the work of setting up the revenue structure and the work, what the district is doing and paying for. And that will be orchestrated through a combination of the equity committee and the board itself um, as we get the contractor that Colin is up and running. They, part of their scope includes uh, working with other contractors on developing a plan for the outreach surrounding the revenue structure. So that will be a big part of it. And then there'll be other outreach and engagement that we need to do. I think personally, I think two BIPOC communities and making sure that we are um, doing that work correctly, but that's you know up for a discussion with this board and we'll be, um, you know, I, I suspect judging from these conversations debated heavily and I look forward to those discussions. Okay, so Thank you. just one quick comment. Um, instead of being a grant making organization, um, I think there needs to be more discussion about how that happens. Um, so thank you. I'll, I'll be quiet here and I know it'll come up later, but I just think there should be more oversight or understanding of who decides who gets the money and why and call me crazy, but I agree with you. I don't think we probably should have gotten the money, but we've been funded before and I asked again and got the money. I won't ask again because of my involvement here, but I know there are other groups that got funding that are in the same situation, so. Um. Well, I, I would say, I think understanding is a big piece of it. I think it's really important that we all have a pretty good understanding of the budget, how it works, where the money's coming from, where the money's going, because you all know we're going to get asked. Um, and I was also gonna say that over the weekend, and Casey is so dedicated, um, he sent me something and uh, it uh, helped explain a few things for myself. And I do plan to send that out to everyone. I guess my, my question is, is we're kind of running short on time. Does everyone feel comfortable in voting on this today or do we want to move it to May 3rd? And that would be when we would have to vote on it. So I think those are the options. 
I'm comfortable voting on it today. I think we've got adequate and satisfactory information for this stage of the game. Okay. Steve, did you have your hand up? I did earlier. I was just going to add that, um, you know, we in Gresham, we, we've been through kind of the legal analysis for rate setting quite a bit. Um, there's a lot of expertise, I think, from uh, the cities that are sitting on the committee. So I, I think there's quite a bit that we're going to be able to add uh, as far as just the um, review of kind of different legal arguments for, for rate setting and the principles behind what um, is going to be defensible and not. Uh, that might help as far as the resources go. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, anyone else? I have a question, Tani, yes. but Go ahead. Not about your vote, Dave. And I, maybe this is for Colin, I'm not sure. Um, uh, about the staffing support budget line items. Colin, can you answer that? Uh, I think Casey uh, would or Casey, that. you can answer that. Um, so there's three staff listed, a full-time budget coordinator, and then two half-time positions. And then there's 92,000 for assorted staff work, and then almost 200,000 for staff support. Are those, are the fourth and fifth, the, the 92,000 and the 200,000 work that's being done by someone other than the three staffers listed there? The fourth item is, the money for the three staff for the three committees. The 199,000 and change, <clears throat> excuse me, is an estimate based roughly on figuring about one and a quarter FTE of people who aren't in the budget. So no board coordinator, no budget person, no committee staff, but me, finance staff, the executive director, whoever you call in. Um, Evan, <laughs> thank you for raising your hand. Um, so that's just an estimate of what that would cost for about that level of support. People putting in an hour here, a couple hours there, five hours this week over the course of a year. And if we don't do it, if we don't do it, the money doesn't get spent. And frankly, and I, I made this point to Tanny because I'm a little defensive about it. We're kind of strapped in the other districts. There's more work to be done than we can squeeze into our available staff. So there's not gonna be a matter of um, people needing to fill time. If there's not the need to work on the urban flood safety water quality district for a staff person or two, they will have plenty to do. Can you, thanks Casey. Can you help me understand why if the salaries and cost of these positions are here, why there's also 92,000 for their work. That feels like we're paying for the staff and then we're paying in addition for their work. No, the 92,000 is, is the people who are directly staffing the committees. Isn't that the three positions listed there? Yes, that's the three yeah, positions. Yeah. The 199 is everybody else who works for MCDD putting in so I get that. time over the course of the year. And then there is a board coordinator position, which is separately listed, and a half-time finance position as well. Right. So what's the ninety-two thousand? That's the that's the cost of three people at twenty percent of their time each. I'm sorry, I didn't make that clear. We're figuring that the staff support for the committees will be about twenty percent of the time for three different individuals. So we're paying less. those three individuals and then we're also paying for their time. Sorry that it doesn't make any sense to me. That is, well, yeah, you're paying them for their time. It, that number is included in the, the total amount of the budgeted payment to MCDD for staff support. The money that is in the line items for the committees, the communications, community engagement, the revenue, um, environment equity, um, that money that's in the line items for the budget is to go to consultants, is to go outside of the district. That's not yeah, paying for staff. So 
I don't know. I'm having okay. trouble making myself clear, I guess. Or I'm you're, not you're doing fine. Okay. Um, so, um, Tandy, um, yes, sir. The board coordinator, I understand, but we have in fact, no compositions i'm having trouble hearing what he's yeah. saying eric i'm sorry you cut out there for a second sir can you ask that question again please is is that the incremental half time position a new hire which one yes the finance yes, analyst uh, is is a new hire. The budget analyst is going to replace me because I'm retiring at the end of June. Okay. Okay. Um, so do you, I'm sensing some people yeah, still got some questions. Split come about? Pardon me? Yeah. Uh, I, I would agree. Is there a way that we have a work session where we could? I think Eric's having technical difficulties. I think he is. <laughs> I think he asked something about a work session. I think anything's a possibility. I guess what I'm wondering is, um, I know some would like to vote on it. It sounds like some have still got some questions. Do we wanna move this to May 3rd? Can I just ask a simple question? Because yes, I'm you probably can. the low person on the totem pole as far as accounting is. Um, can we, if we vote on it and there's still questions about how the money spent, et cetera. Can't that be handled through budget amendments? Or um, if, and I, I mean, I obviously had questions, but I figure that it can all unravel in the end and that there's been a lot of time put into this by a lot of experts. Um, and if it helps us move forward, we can do that. And um, if we're gonna talk about amounts and dollars, it, I don't understand these kind of big giant budgets, governmental agencies, but can't there be budget amendments or, you know, we want to spend more money. Um, I know the city does those, you know, fall and spring bumps. Mm -hmm. um, something like that be part of this process um, because like Mike said, it depends and we don't know what it depends on until we approve a budget and pay for it. And, um, if, you know, taking a vote and the majority of people want to go to May 3rd, fine. But then there are people that have more detailed questions. Um, can those be handled after we vote on the budget? There are a couple of ways to address that. The first is something that doesn't happen very often, but it does. And that is that the board, the governing body, has the authority to change the budget by up to 10% of the total spending that's budgeted. Um, <clears throat> within the amounts that are budgeted, you can move it around when you meet as the board to adopt the budget later in June. Or if there is a need that's seen in the coming fiscal year, yes, you can amend the budget, either through a formal process that's laid out in budget law or informally by saying we budgeted this much money to go to these things but we want to spend it on little different things you don't formally the law says you don't have to amend the budget to do that just direct the staff to do it a little differently but if you're going to change the amounts of money or if you want to do it because you think it's the right thing to do then you can go through a formal process that answer your question okay 
I would say by and large, you really want to yes. get as much of it on the front side as you possibly can. But I'm guessing that um, my questions, Eric's questions, because there's however many else people I lost track, um, 26 other people, some are staff on there. Mm -hmm. the, those questions can be answered at another time, and I'm fine with that. I, I don't, I don't want to hold up the process by saying, "Tell me what this is or why you did this." And Casey's explanation of it can be handled out there. Casey's dealt with city governmental agency budgets, and so that advice to me is solid. I'm perfectly willing to vote on it now if it helps us move forward. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm looking for basically a motion to move to May 3rd or a motion to put it on the table now. If everyone's comfortable with it. And if everyone's not comfortable with it, let's get comfortable with it. I'll move that we put it on the table now. I'll move it to every statement. Okay. As presented, Casey, or Corky, I saw. As presented, yes. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I just need to understand what the motion is. Are you, is the motion to agree to vote on it? So if you voted for the motion, then you're going to vote on it later, or are you moving to approve the budget as it's been presented? I'm hearing a motion to approve the budget as presented. Right. Yeah. I move that we approve the budget as presented. Okay. Thank you for the clarification, Casey. You're right. Mr. Hogan, you look like you had your hand up. No? No, sir. I was in favor of the clarification and thanking all those who weighed in. Okay. Second. Mr. Shirley, I'll second the motion. Okay. Um, any discussion on the motion? Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve the Urban Flood Safety Water Quality District uh, fiscal year budget for 2021-2022 as presented. Emily. Yes, and so I can go ahead and call, do a roll call vote. Um, just forgive me while I'll, do, I'll be doing math on the fly. So, and, um, so I'll start with Ann Gravitt. Yes. Bob Salinger. Yes. Lori Stegman. Hi. Corky Collier. Hi. Dave Ritma. Yes. Uh, Eric Mueller. Aye. Shirley Craddock. Aye. Eric Molander. Did he drop off? I might have. Okay. Uh, James Allison. Aye. Uh, John L. Bell. Aye. Mary Helen Kincaid? Aye. Paul Lumley? Aye. Steve Fancher? Yes. Tanny Stephenson? Yes. And Michael Jordan? Aye. Great. So it's a proved uh, unanimously. That passes. Great. Right. Okay. Can we go ahead and adjourn? Yes. Okay. Uh, this time I'd entertain a motion to adjourn the uh, budget committee meeting for the urban flood safety water quality district. So moved. Okay. Second. Was that right? And all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. We are adjourned. Aye. Thank you. Aye. <laughs> okay. And uh, I will reconvene the regular meeting and I noticed after finally looking at my uh, agenda, thank you, Emily, mm -hmm. right over public comments. Uh, is there anyone from the public that wishes to make any comments? I think I'll ask again at the end too. 
So if not, Emily, you want us to approve some minutes, I guess, huh? Sure, yeah, and we're a bit behind on the agenda. And so I just have a few, a couple of administrative items. So maybe we can make up some time. Uh, as I, I outlined in my email to you all, uh, I realized that um, the difference between the work that we do managing the drainage district boards and uh, the work that I do for all, you all, there is a policy difference, which is I need you all to formally approve uh, the written version of your minutes. Uh, we don't do that at the drainage district. The recording serves as the, the, the permanent record. Uh, so I included in your packet uh, the minutes from, so we're just gonna go back through and I'm just gonna ask you all to formally approve those and we'll be caught up in the next few meetings. So I had in your packet a, the minutes from the May through July meetings in 2020 and I just look for a motion to approve those minutes um, as presented in your packet. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? I move to accept the minutes as approved in the packet or as presented, sorry. Thank you. Madam and Madam. I'll second. Thank you, Corky. Second. Can we voice vote this or you need to call us out? You Emily? know, I need to call them out. Um, okay. All right, it. so um, Ann Gravitt. Yes. Bob Salinger. Yes. Uh, Lori Segman. Aye. Corky Collier. Sorry, hi. Dave Ripma. Yes. Eric Mueller. Yes. Shirley Craddock. I, um, I do notice an error though in the minutes and I, I can send it into you electronically. Um, you have the date, see. you have the date reference up in the left-hand corner as 2021. Ah, okay. So I'll make that adjustment. Um, Eric Molander, are you back with us? Uh, yes, uh, and I. Thank you. James Allison? Yes. Uh, John L. Bell? Aye. Uh, Mary Helen Kincaid? Aye. Paul Lumley? Aye. Steve Fancher? Aye. Tanny Stephenson? Aye. And Michael Jordan? Aye. Great. Thank you for that, everybody. Now you've got a couple of subcommittee resolutions, right? Yes, so uh, in your March meeting, I believe we discussed process for establishing subcommittees. And one of those items just to formalize and authorize the work of the subcommittee is adopting resolutions to um, just formally establish them and get on the record that the board has authorized the work. And so the two resolutions that uh, I'm, we are seeking approval from you all on are to establish the budget shortfall committee, which has been meeting uh, for uh, nearly a year now, I think, and then the revenue analysis and development subcommittee. And so I'm looking for a motion to approve uh, res the, both those resolutions. And I will just go ahead and screen share the motion from the pack from the agenda in case you don't have it in front of you because it's a lot of words. So. I would, uh, I'm seeking a motion to approve resolution R2021-0404 and R2021-0402, establishing the budget shortfall subcommittee and the revenue analysis and development subcommittee. We have a motion to that effect. I move so for moved. approval. I think Shirley I'll moved. And who would second? Second, Eric Molander. Thank you, Eric. Okay, Emily. Great, okay, here we go again. Um, Ann Gravitt. Yes. Bob Salinger. Yes. Lori Stegman. Aye. Corky Collier. Aye. Dave Ritma. Yes. Eric Miller. Yes. Shirley Craddock. Aye. Eric Molander. Aye. James Allison? Aye. John L. Bell? Aye. Mary Helen Kincaid? Aye. Paul Lumley? Aye. Steve Fancher? Are you there? Aye, I'm sorry, my mute button was stuck. It's okay, I'm, we're doing amazing on muting and unmuting today, I, I think. I give us a solid A. Tandy Staffenson? Aye. And Mike Jordan? Hi. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, Emily. Mm -hmm. um, I just want everybody on this call to know that I have, this is my 37th year 
of being involved in public meetings. I have never heard my name called out so many times in a public meeting. Thank you, Emily. Sure. Really appreciate that. Um, Evan, I think you're next. The charter? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. All right. I um, We had the pleasure of approving a charter last month for the Mission Vision Values Committee. And um, I, as the first committee out the gate, we are, this is our first charter that we're going through. Staff uh, worked collaboratively to kind of build a charter that both talked about what the, the committee process would look like, what we were asking of committee members, and also address some of the, the requirements under public meeting law and some of the, the more specific elements that we needed to outline. So you've had that in your packet. I believe it started on page 19. And what we are asking the board to do today is pass a resolution approving this charter. Um, and then the Mission Vision Values Committee will be on their way and continue meeting and the subsequent committees will, will be bringing similar charters uh, coming forward. If it's useful, I'd be happy to talk through some of the main elements, but it's pretty straightforward. Our charge is develop a mission, mission vision values for the district. And we're using a process that Caraggio laid out for you uh, last month and is detailed in your minutes. Are there questions of Evan around the charter? Or are there any particular pieces, Evan, that you think are highlights that the board needs to be incredible, you know, more aware of than all the rest? No, it's, it's pretty standard fare for public meet, um, you know, public bodies. We have a quorum requirement. Currently, this committee has a seven um, member kind of floor. We can have more than that, but, um, and so we currently have seven members that have volunteered to participate in the process. And so to make any formal decisions, we'll need those, you know, a quorum of those folks available. Fortunately for this process, there's only really one big decision. We'll be working sort of on a consensus based process along the way. And then at the end, we'll recommend a product, a, a recommend a product for the full board to consider. I see uh, Mr. Lumley, you've got your hand up. Uh, thank you, um, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. The um, charter is um, really good. I uh, speak in favor of it. Um, the reality for my situation is, however, that I could not contribute the amount of time that is necessary. And so you'll see at the end that the committee members would need to sign, and I just don't think I could in full faith sign. So I'm just letting you know that I should pull off of this committee just because I can't contribute the amount of work that is necessary. I just speak in favor of the charter and hope it passes. Thank you, Paul, for letting us know. I know everybody's situation changes and lots of work out there. And so I really appreciate you letting us know that. So we'll find, find another member. The other thing I would note is that we welcome participation, you know, as much as possible. <laughs> but I understand that five meetings in a two and a half month period is a lot to commit to. So if there's, you know, certain aspects you're more interested in, for example, Paul, I could see you being a wonderful addition on the, the vision conversation, maybe participating in a part that uh, feels most compelling to you. Um, and then, you know, we can, we can figure it out as we go, just to make sure that we've got voices at the table. Sure, I'd be happy to contribute. We can have a conversation offline if you'd like. Great, thank you. So just to clarify, you uh, were need a motion at this moment, is that correct? Yes, uh, it's on your agenda. I will go ahead and I move to approve resolution number R2021 0401 adopting a charter for the Mission Vision Values Subcommittee. Second, this is Paul. Thanks, Paul. So I have a motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? If not, Emily, would you call the roll, please? My pleasure. 
Um, <laughs> Ann Gravitt. Yes. Uh, Bob Salinger. Yes. Gloria Stegman. Aye. Corky Collier. Aye. Dave Ritma. Yes. Eric Mueller. Yes. Shirley Craddock. Aye. Eric Molander. Aye. James Allison. Yes. John L. Bell. Aye. Mary Helen Kincaid. Yes. Paul Lumley. Aye. Steve Fancher. Aye. Tandy Stephenson. Aye. And Michael Jordan. Yes. Thank all you. Right. Thank you all. Um, the next item, and we're catching up. Uh, next item is Colin with the Revenue Analysis Development Contract Update. Yes. Uh, thank you. No roll call vote required for this one. Just a brief update um, from last month uh, where we noted that um, we had a somewhat lackluster response to the original RFP. Um, we went back and actually uh, spoke with the two contractors uh, that did propose for the uh, revenue de development um, RFP that we had posted um, and also reached out to some others in the field um, just to talk through both why they did or did not um, make proposals and uh, had a number of meetings internally and then with others and revised the RFP. Um, and so just wanted to let you know where we are on that. Uh, that will be posted on ORPIN, the state's uh, procurement network um, tomorrow. So that'll be posted uh, an updated version. Um, so that will be out for three weeks. When we have the official link, um, that will also be posted uh, on our website at MCDD, um, and I'll have uh, Emily or Kirsten will um, send that out to you all. Uh, so it would be greatly appreciated uh, if you know people that do this type of work or if others in your organization um, have done similar work, uh, finance planning, revenue planning, uh, anything like that, uh, please circulate the link. Um, and it'll also be posted in the Daily Journal of Commerce. Um, so it'll be posted for three weeks uh, through uh, May 13th um, with the expectation to have a, um, a notice of intent to award at the end of May, which would mean uh, if contracting goes smoothly, we would have a contractor um, in uh, mid-June. So uh, I think I want to highlight a few major changes, some that we've already talked about and some that are clearly in your um, budget, but this has been extended from uh, a completion date of June of 2022 to completion date of June 2023. That was based on uh, some of the feedback from the consultants that had taken a look at this. Uh, we also wanted to, as we changed around some of the expectations on things, there's also uh, a need for deeper analysis. Uh, so changed from the initially identified $150,000 to $250,000, which we believe is um, a much more reasonable budget for this work, especially um, with the support um, for the community outreach and engagement needed uh, to make it a success with the uh, communication line item and a, a separate communication consultant that really does have specific knowledge in this. Um, so there's other things, there's a revised project scope, um, provide some more background and a greater detail on levels or what the expectations are. There's a revised evaluation criteria that are, are more focused um, and less generic. And then, um, yeah, that will be able to provide um, an additional update in May, but I also wanna note that um, you just approved a resolution to formally cr create a revenue development um, and analysis subcommittee of your board, uh, similar, Evan's very much the uh, on the vanguard for this. Um, so just as she brought you last month, uh, the resolution to create the MVV committee and then the charter this month, uh, next month we'll bring you a charter um, for that committee and then we'll be able to meet after that. Um, so with that, I'll take any questions. Any questions for Colin? All right, congratulations, Colin. We're nearly back on schedule. Way to go. Thanks. Um, 
So I am uh, on the agenda that's supposed to provide an update regarding uh, the executive director recruitments. Um, I can say, and there are a number of people on this call that were involved also in the interview process that we had. Um, uh, you'll recall that uh, we hired, our MCG hired Mary Rowe to handle the uh, recruitment. And I have to say, in a lot of years, I have not seen uh, the quality of uh, candidates uh, that we had uh, for this executive director position. You'll recall that, uh, make sure I get this, Mary Helen and Corky and Bob and myself, and I'm missing somebody. It was Anne, I believe, was, I was, on on the, it. It was on the committee, along with Ken Anderton. Uh, Corky was there representing uh, MCDD, I believe, Corky, and, and Peggy uh, on the interview panel. Um, and uh, just a really high quality uh, group of candidates uh, went through uh, two rounds of interviews. And uh, Ken is hand, because this person will be officially a, a, an employee of MCDD, uh, Ken uh, and, as the chair and the board need to uh, approve this. Emily, maybe you can tell me or someone can on this call tell me what the status is of that process right now, because I'm not, I'm not involved in that or Colin, I don't know who. Yes, or Corky, do you want to speak to it? You're on the board. Sure, I'm happy to. Uh, MCDD board will be meeting tomorrow uh, to make a decision on it. Uh, we met last week, uh, but we had not gotten the information uh, out to the entire board in time. And they went a little time to just look it over, be responsible and say, you know, do we actually agree on this before we vote on it? Uh, but we don't expect any problem. Um, I think it's going to go through as the selection committee uh, suggested. So good to know. And so soon we'll have a, a new uh, executive director, I believe. Uh, and, you know, I'll, I'll add in just one quick note. Uh, it came up again, uh, the concern that this group, that this board uh, is pleased with the selection. And I, I, I hopefully, I, I think we can say that. Uh, it, we certainly wanted to include you we, the MCD board, wanted to include this board in that process. And even up to the end, they wanted to make sure that you felt that you were included. Yeah, I, I can just speak. It was, a, it was a, I thought it was a really well-run process. Uh, we had, as I mentioned, multiple voices at the table. Um, I think we were very impressed with the candidates. And I, I would say we're in agreement with with the, the candidate that MCDD boards will consider tomorrow. So that's great. Any other questions on that? I wanna. No, I just wanna comment that I agree with all you said. Um, having been involved in a couple of city hires boards, um, no offense city employees, but Mary Road did an excellent job of directing us, informing us um, and I think any one of even the original applicants could do the job. So um, I, I believe everyone will be happy. I, I couldn't see where they wouldn't be, so. Thank you, Mary Helen. Okay, with that, I wanna turn it over to Carrie Sanneman, who's gonna give us a, a presentation on the indigenous peoples of the floodplain. Is that right, Carrie? Well, luckily for you, it is not coming from me, huh. coming from Dr. David Lewis, but I am going to introduce him. All and right. Is, uh, is Dr. Lewis, I just looked through the list. Is he here? David Lewis. I do not see, hang on. Yeah, you're right, I don't. I, I don't see his name uh, on the call. Okay. Well, we might be getting you all back on track in terms of your agenda. <laughs> um, 
because I, yeah, that that's our speaker for um, this afternoon. I think you should perhaps proceed and I'll see what I can do to track down what happened here. Okay. Um, Colin, since Peggy is not here, I, I would ask, do, do you have anything uh, regarding the update new business issues? Or any of the other staff for that matter? Um, I don't have anything, um, but definitely look to Phil um, and maybe also uh, Evan, if there's any legislative update um, that would benefit this board. Evan, do you have anything? Uh, I mean, we can certainly update the board on um, our request for funding for this agency. Uh, okay. But, um, so uh, Peggy is out and I'm um, serving as acting uh, executive director. And I have no additional information to share with the board today. So I'll, um, uh, I'll share my time with uh, Evan for the remainder. Thanks. Vamp, Evan, vamp. All right. <laughs> well, um, actually, this is this is good timing. We are in the process of uh, requesting letters from all of the Multnomah County members of the legislature to support our ask of $2 million from Ways and Means. We just met with um, folks from the various cities and county to help with this request. Um, we have about, I think last time I counted, 20 requests that are getting ready to go out to the area legislators uh, at the recommendation of Speaker Kotek, who is also signing on to this letter. And our hope is that having an outpouring of support from the uh, Multnomah County area will help the Ways and Means, uh, basically the co-chairs decide to allocate some funding. Currently our request is unattached, so we're not asking for a specific pot of money, um, just that they find $2 million to allocate for us in some way. We presume it will likely come from the business organ um, world if it, you know, if it does move forward. We have great relationships um, with the Ways and Means co-chairs and our lobbyist is going to be meeting with them soon to kind of dig into this request further. So um, all things considered, it feels like we're on positive track. We've gotten good support so far. People understand what we're doing and why we need this funding. And um, in May, as they get into the heat of their budget discussions, I think we'll get a little bit more clarity. And as I've said before, and we'll continue to say, we probably won't have a firm answer until the week, uh, the last week of session when they're finally kind of buttoning everything up. Um, but uh, so far, we feel we feel good about the response that we've gotten. It's been very positive. Thanks, Evan. Um, has there been any discussion at MCDD regarding um, what's called the community projects process? Not a lot, but yes, uh, it has. Uh, it's been mentioned to me. Okay. Well, for those on the call who don't know the. Uh, a few years ago, I don't remember how many it was, uh, Congress basically banned earmarks and uh, have found that they can no longer even talk to each other without such a thing. So um, they're bringing back something called community project program or something like that, and have been taking requests at the delegation level for um, things that could be submitted uh, during the appropriations process uh, as a community project. And so I didn't know if we'd, we had kind of a fire drill uh, uh, request at the city uh, for those things. I didn't know if, if uh, you had been talking federally with anybody. We've talked to our federal lobbyist about it. She's watching okay. it. Obviously, we're waiting for the Senate this week to decide what um, what that looks like for them, uh, okay. you know, I think from a timing perspective, it this year doesn't necessarily make sense. But if we were to proceed, we would likely talk about some capital funding requests in, in right. some of the fiscal years. 
Good, good. It's only certain pots of money. We applied for one at the port, so it is yeah. only certain um, pots of money. But um, anyways, it's a good flag, Mike, and we should be thinking about it for yeah. MCDD yeah. too. So Emily, anything? Uh, no, I guess just in Carrie's defense, I wanted to point out, um, I don't remember if we touched base on this in the last meeting, but um, Karen Carrillo uh, has been doing the work with Dr. Lewis on this project. And so Carrie was stepping in for her and Karen actually um, started a new job um, a couple of weeks ago. And so she's no longer with the drainage districts. And um, oh. obviously she, uh, was a really valued member of our team and we um, all miss her, but especially right now in random um, communication gaps. Um, so I think that would explain probably the miscommunication with Dr. Lewis. So um, just FYI. But other than that, I think according to the agenda, I think we can roll into um, the executive session. Okay. And if you need the script for that, let me know and I can pull that up for you. I, I got it on the agenda. Carrie, are you okay with us moving forward? Yeah, I am. I uh, looked at the, the invite and it looks like somewhere along the way he uh, said he wasn't coming. So ah, well. catch that and uh, so I'm <laughs> doubtful that we'll get him on the line in the near future. I think it should move forward and hopefully we can arrange another time he's available. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully we can reschedule. That's great. So Emily, isn't his presentation online? He, he did a presentation to format um, and it was excellent. But yes. um, in person it might be more exciting, but very informative. Um, and um, with, I think it would be if people are eager to see it right away, um, maybe you could send that link and they could look at it or um, find out when he's going to reschedule. But that might be helpful. Yeah, I can I can put the link for the drainage district board's presentation into the my follow up email. Great. So. Uh, Hopefully we can get that out and maybe even rescheduled. Uh, Hong, um, I have uh, uh, in red here on my agenda what I think you would like me to say to go into executive session. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, then. Uh, I'd like us to now uh, go into executive session to discuss confidential legal advice and attorney-client communications not related to litigation pursuant to ORS 40.255, ORS 192.355, Section 9A, and ORS 192.660, Section 2F. Um, I'm going to, I went ahead and resumed the recording for the regular session. Okay, thank you. So, so I think that the first, the first is uh, asking for your um, general consensus or thumbs up on the employee absorption uh, agreement. Uh, certainly from my standpoint, uh, having had experience of transitioning uh, city employees to Multnomah County and going mm -hmm. through the process of uh, the PERS pieces and, and labor union pieces and benefits and so forth, uh, I certainly think that that's uh, something that I would be supportive of, I, and I think that it can be accomplished in a manner that reassures the existing employees because clearly this this board, the subsequent board and subsequent organization is going to need their expertise. Um, as was pointed out in the beginning, they're the ones that know how to operate the existing system. And uh, so we certainly don't want to start over from scratch and go out and start recruiting for all positions and so forth. So uh, I, I certainly would be supportive of the transition. Uh, Hong, do you need a motion for this or is this just consensus? Yeah, I, I don't need a motion. I just need a general consensus of thumbs up. Go ahead and, and pre uh, talk to the MCDD board about this framework. I will be back with this board on the official IGA and that's where a, a formal vote will be necessary. So let me just ask, is there anybody opposed to Hong moving forward with this conversation with the MCDD board? I'm not I'm opposed, saying. but has anybody talked to them or their employees? It's like, um, this will what this will make me feel secure. 
or was uh, this I, a, like I can... a top down kind of <laughs> I don't want to put anybody well, in the spot but sorry yeah, I, I know that uh, this definitely uh, is one of those items that will help uh, employees morale, Mary Helen. Um, so it is something that employees are, are looking looking at adding um, to okay. to add some stability. That's good. Okay. Annie, you looked like you wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I was just going to say um, there's a substantial piece of her narrative that I missed and couldn't hear. So I'm just a little uncomfortable on not having all the information to make a, to make a decision of this magnitude. Do you have any particular question that you don't? Uh, no, on the base, I don't have any particular questions, but I also just wanted to say, I didn't hear everything that she had to say. And Tenny, I guess for just for um, like the technical, this is just to allow her to continue drafting and then you'll be able to make a formal decision when she brings the IGA forward. Okay. I consent to um, moving forward. Anyone opposed to moving forward? All right, Hong, I think you can go speak with the MCDD board about this. All righty, thank you. And Tenny, I'm happy to provide you with my, my um, slide sheet if, if that helps address some of the technical gaps that happened today. So sorry about that. Thank you. So on the second piece, Emily, do you happen to have that last slide that's got the motion on? Can you put that up? Thank you. I think Zoom calls make us all be good lip readers <laughs> when, pe when people don't unmute themselves. Uh, just a question, do we have a quorum? I see quite a few people have dropped off. So is there enough people here to vote? Oh, it's a good question. Um, That's a great question. Four, five, six. We have 12. Seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. That's good. Okay, then I'll, I'll move to authorize the executive director to negotiate and, and executive and informal agreement. Execute. 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 Oh, execute. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> An Typo. Agreement with, with the city of Portland consistent with the terms that have been presented today or in a similarly significant form. Second. And I'll second. I, I didn't catch that first one before Corky. I didn't know who, who that was. So Corky, you get the second, I guess. So moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion or questions? If not, Emily. What will the process be for the draws other than what we, we've seen so far? Was there gonna be any other oversight at all? Hong, I believe it's stated that on the, uh, the request has to come, I want to say 15 days before the draw can be approved. Is that right? Okay. Yes. And yes. And then, yes. And there is, uh, w the approval is subject to the sign off from the, the BES uh, director and the chief financial officer. The only other um, reporting is that there will be a requirement for the urban district to uh, make sure that the uh, when the loan payment is scheduled, that that uh, repayment amount is in your annual budget. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, um, Emily, you want to read the roll? Yes, um, let's see. Um, and I'm gonna go off of who's still on, so it'll be a whole new order. Uh, Tani Saffinson. Tani? Unmuting. Sorry about that, yes. <laughs> um, James Ellison? Yes. 
Ann Gravett? Yes. Uh, Shirley Craddock? Aye. Mm -hmm. um, Bob Salinger? Yes. Mary Helen Kincaid? Yes. Lori Segman? Aye. Corky Collier? Aye. John L. Bell? Aye. Eric Mueller? Aye. Dave Ritma? Yes. And Michael Jordan? Yes. Is there anyone I missed? Great. Well, that passes unanimously as well. Okay. I think thank that's you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Hong, and thank your kids. <laughs> For staying off the internet for a certain amount of time, so I know how tough that is. Uh, I, I'm going to ask again because I was late last time. Is there any member of the public or anyone wishing to make a public comment? Okay. If not, then uh, are there any other issues for the good of the order, gang? Today, heavy lifting today. Way to go! Accomplished a lot. Thank you so much. You bet. Okay, then we stand adjourned. Thank you all.